if you're looking to get better at your data interviews, this video is going to share some tips on how you can level up and improve on the scale. Just to give you some context, I recently, you know, led the recruitment of some data analyst roles, junior data analyst roles um, in my organization. And there are a lot of things that I saw during the entire process. And the goal of this video is really just to share some of them with you. These are things that I actually shared on my WhatsApp status and a lot of people were interested um, in me making a video in really just, you know, doing like a comprehensive list on, on some of the mistakes that I've seen and how you as a candidate can improve on this. And I hope at the end of this video, you will have picked a lot of tips. I'm sure you would. So let's get into it without wasting time. For people that might be new on the channel, my name is Adebola and I've been working remotely as a data analyst for about three years now. But I have over six years of work experience. Outside work, I create YouTube videos really just to help people thrive within the data field. So during the interview process, there is this candidate that during the interview, she was unable to like articulate and communicate how her skills align with the role. And her energy just feels like she's not interested in the job. It was really hard for us to like really understand what she's all about. And when it was time for her to like ask us questions, you can see how, you know, the energy level just increased, right? And she asked us about Ten questions. What is the turn off for me to be honest? One, you were someone that was not so much interested in telling us who you are, and by the time we asked you to, you know, ask us the questions, you were so eager, and it's like something happened to your energy. And I think for me, it's not even about the questions she asked; it's about how the questions are not thoughtful, because ninety-five percent of the questions she was asking us. There are questions that she can find on our website, right? And I honestly do not want to hire that kind of person because that just shows that she has not done her assignment. So a tip here is if you get into like the first interview process, the least you can do is really just to understand what the company is all about and really just have all those information ready. I mean, there's nothing wrong in like asking the follow on questions, but let your questions be thoughtful and let the interviewer, you know, get the feel like you've done your research and your assignment. I think that would be the first mistake. And this is how I think you should, you know, avoid that. So the second one is using abbreviations. And I will use an example to, you know, to explain this part. So I worked with an organization called Shidlit Africa. Most people often call them SLE, right? And you will notice that during the interview process, a lot of candidates will be using this abbreviations, right? But me as an interviewer, I do not understand what you're trying to say. I do not even know who this company is. I mean, because most of the people that apply to the role, they are Nigerians. So there's some things that I can relate to. But I also have another colleague that does that is not based here, that has no idea of who these organizations are. So the tip here is when you're in an interview, always ensure that whatever that you're saying, ensure you explain it in a clear manner so that whoever is listening to you, they can understand who the company is, what they do, and also what you've done for them. And I hope this makes sense. The third part is attaching different links into your CV. So during the process, um, I've, I came across about two to three candidates where the links they attached, you know, um, to the CV as their portfolio, the links are actually not working. We would definitely not, you know, progress those kind of people to like the next stage when we have other candidates that you know they did their research and they really just cross check to be sure that all the links on their cv are working right and this is something you want to avoid when you're applying for a role when you're going for an interview just ensure that whatever links or whatever emails or whatever phone numbers you put on your cv they're active and they're working perfectly and i hope this makes sense the other mistake also is also just being realistic with what you know and also not overestimating your skills. Um, so I remember this one very well, where one of the questions was, um, was for a candidate and the question is for him to actually rate his SQL skills. And he said his SQL skills is 
um, 9 over 10. And I was quite intrigued because I would honestly not rate my sub as 9 over 10 with SQL skill. Like, like with my use of SQL, even though I know so much about SQL because there's usually just a lot of room to like grow, to like get better. So when this candidate said 9 over 10, two things jump at me. I was curious as to why someone that has this much skill in SQL will apply because like I said, it's a junior role. And the second is also just because I was curious to know what this person knows, right? And I just asked one simple question and it couldn't, you know, give me an accurate answer. So the tip here is it's fine to want to like sell yourself and you should sell yourself well, but there's also moderation. Like don't oversell yourself. Don't say you can do what you can't do. And there's also the part of you not underselling yourself. And, and I think that's where that balance, that's where you need to like have that skill to, you know, balance the two where you're not underselling yourself, but you're also not doing too much. This next one, I think is the one that probably got to me the most. This mistake is around the question of what do you know about the company? Like, why would you be applying for a job and you have no idea or you can't even articulate what the company is all about and honestly as simple as this question is this is a question a lot of them you know could not answer even though they have you know their sequel their technical skills they're you know up there but then the fact that they can't say so much about what the company is all about or how they think the company generates money when i say generates money i don't mean like them giving us like you know a one page of like how we make money but like just the product that the company you know offer a lot of candidates struggle with it so the tip here is if you're looking to apply to any organization the least you can do is to know about what the company is all about there's their website there's their linkedin sometimes some companies even have like videos or like interviews like their um, teammates or like their management team have done in the past that you can really just watch that can give you an idea what the company is all about so please do not go into an interview without knowing what the organization is all about and I think the final one would be for you to really understand what you should share or what you should not share in an interview so there is this candidate that she was telling us in the interview that she just lost her dad so she needed the money like i do not need to know all those details really i think there's some personal information that can boost your chances of getting some jobs but there's also some details that you do not need to share during your interview process i mean we're sorry that you lost your dad but that doesn't you know relate to the role that we're looking to get or like the role we're recruiting for and these are like the high level things that i saw during the entire um recruitment process and like i said it's a junior role so most of the candidates that intervene most of them also don't have that much um experience or some have the experience experience but they're looking to transition into the data field and i hope this makes sense i hope you've picked one or two things um and i hope you're going to like implement one of those tips um, in your next interview process. And I'll also be happy to like read your interview experience. If you have any to like share, I'll be happy to read them and also just share my thoughts. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and see you in my next video. Bye.